I've got to be honest, last Saturday night as the results started to trickle in, I was struggling to think of a way to open this video that wouldn't involve me swearing copiously at the results of the local and European elections. Then I slept on it and got a bit of a better handle on my anger. But the first question I still have to ask, because it's what I've been asking myself ever since voting, is are people happy with the way Ireland is being run? Honestly? Because f hell, how can people continue to vote for Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil? It just beggars belief. Right, so I'm going to look at the facts, the political and media spin put on those facts and talk about where we go from here. Okay, so right off the bat, 49% voter turnout. Lowest voter turnout for local elections ever, apparently, and the first turnout lower than 50%. 49%, that is absolutely shocking. One in two people registered to vote did didn't bother. Not turning up to vote is a vote for the status quo because you can bet your arse the Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil voter base will get out and vote. And so they did. 49% hell. Do people not want a change? Because you don't get to moan about the way the country is run if you didn't even bother to cast a vote. Sure, the candidates may not have been to your liking, but voting strategically to keep the worst of the worst out is still a valid way of making your voice heard and is far better than not bothering at all. I'm going to be honest here, I absolutely f hate politics. That might surprise you given the nature of my channel and the work I put in to keep up with the politics of Ireland, but I do that to stay informed because I want to know exactly who to blame for the criminal waste and mismanagement of our country and I use my channel to vent so that my poor husband doesn't have to be my only sounding board. But yeah, I hate politics and yet I still took time out of my day to research the candidates and decide who to vote for. Yes, it's f boring. Yes, it's time consuming, but it's only once every few years, so I think I'll manage. We have all the information we could ever need on our phones 24-7. There is no excuse not to be informed and vote. So seriously, when the general election rolls around, get informed and get voting. So let's look at the results of the locals. Fianna Fáil have the most seats with 248, with Fine Gael just behind them on 245, with Sinn Féin at 102, behind independence with 186. In terms of first preference votes, Fine Gael shades it with 23% and Fianna Fáil at 22.9%. Sinn Féin got 11.8% of first preference votes, again eclipsed by independence at 20.9%. Social Democrats have done well out of the locals, while the Greens, not so much. Ah well. So the headline figures are that Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael have decisively outdone their main political rivals, Sinn Féin. And look, I get it. I know that local politics is a different beast to a general election. The locals are where parish pump politics thrives. It's where people may be more inclined to ignore party affiliation because, well, this candidate filled in the potholes or that candidate got funding to do up the local playground. And that is important. You want to vote for people who actually care about the local area and help. And I get that, I really do. It's why I'm so happy for the people of Donegal who have elected four candidates from the new 100% redress party who are bringing the fight to the county council over the shameful handling of the mica issue, where people's homes are literally crumbling around them due to defective blocks and foundations while the government do nothing to help them. That's what local politics is about, people coming together to fight a local issue. And as an aside, I sincerely I sincerely hope that the general election is kind to the 100% redress party as they deserve to be listened to at a national level also. At least one good news story from the elections is a win any way you slice it. Another good news story is the decline of the Greens. I'm not opposed to protecting the environment at all, but I can't deny I'm happy to see the myopic all stick and no carrot approach from the Greens get rejected at the ballots. Will there be calls for Eamon Ryan to resign now or is that just reserved? for Mary Lou. I know I, for one, will be hoping this new green trend continues into a general election. But that slice of good news doesn't change how disheartening it is to see so many from Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil get elected. These are the parties that have been in power since the foundation of the state. These are the parties that are directly responsible for so much pain and hardship inflicted on the electorate, all while mismanaging any good times we looked ourselves into. 
point to. How, when we have such scandalous homeless figures, when we have children suffering in agony on never-ending spinal surgery waiting lists, when we have an absolute shit show of a children's hospital that is only becoming more expensive, when we have a cost of living crisis, and when we have so many people not happy with the current immigration policies which are set out by our current government, how can people still vote for these parties even in the locals? I just don't get it. And it's not that people aren't being picky about who they're voting for because the electorate seem to have zeroed in on Sinn Féin to give them a kicking. So it can be done, but for whatever reason people decided they'd rather teach Sinn Féin a lesson instead of the chancers who are actually responsible for all the issues we are seeing in Ireland. But again, local elections are a different beast and I have to keep telling myself that. So let's talk about the framing of these results. Well, Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil are claiming a win, ably supported by the cheerleading media, while Sinn Féin are licking their wounds after a bruising day at the office, while their rivals and the cheerleading media have a field day over their apparent collapse. So straight off the bat, the results have emboldened the ruling parties, with Minister for Homelessness Dara O'Brien actually saying that the results mean that the electorate is satisfied that the government are working in their interest. I mean, f***ing hell, that is some statement. That's what this election means to these chancers, these spoofers stealing a living at our expense. It means that they can ignore any criticisms because they managed to not collapse at the local elections. We also had Pascal Donoghue claim that the narrative that a Sinn Féin government is inevitable has been shattered. And of course we had soundbite Simon in overdrive telling everyone that the local elections were an unmitigated disaster for Sinn Féin while trying in vain to act clever with his Mary Lou splaining shite. We have restless backbenchers calling for an early general election to capitalise on this result. It's clear they are riding high after these results. They are emboldened. But the question is, why? Why are they emboldened? When we look at the actual results, we see a slightly different picture to what the media and politicians themselves are spinning. We see that all three government parties have lost seats since the last local elections, which might explain why party leaders are seemingly reluctant to call a general election. We also see Sinn Féin gain seats. And yet the narrative is that Sinn Féin had a disaster and the coalition are sitting pretty. So first things first, there is no denying that Sinn Féin have not performed as well as they should have given their popularity since the last set of elections. And while they did increase their share of seats, well, it was from a low base as the 2019 local elections were not in the least bit kind to them. So while they have actually improved decently from 2019, this this is not the triumphant precursor to a general election that they would have wanted. So the narrative that Sinn Féin have fumbled big time here does actually ring true, with the important caveat, of course, that the local elections are usually more to do with local issues, and as I said, an area where party affiliation can often be ignored in favour of the individual. And there is still time for Sinn Féin to right the ship. But what of the narrative that the big winners here were Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil? Is it just opportunity? opportunistic spin. Well, you know what? I don't think it's all spin. Despite the fact that they both lost ground compared to previous local elections, and that was with an historically low voter turnout that invariably favours those in power, as not voting is a vote for the status quo as I mentioned earlier, but despite all that, they're sitting pretty, aren't they? They may have lost some seats, but they didn't lose as much as they feared, and their biggest political threat in Sinn Féin were not the big beneficiaries. That was the independents and assorted others. And the independents and assorted others are not a big threat to the establishment, no matter how much they would like to be, and I'll explain why I think that way. Right, so let's just talk about the independents first. A good independent politician is a fantastic thing to find. They can be a rare breed at times, but they are important, and I would be of the view that having a few independent TDs in power is a good thing to bring an outsider perspective. But not all independents are created 
equally now, are they? Just look at Dahl Aaron's voting record to see what I mean. How many so-called independent TDs make an awful habit of voting with the government? And that's the problem with independents. You really have to do your research on them to find out which ones are the decent, honest, hard-working ones and which ones are government in all but name. And to be honest, you can see from the transfers in both the local and European elections that a lot of people did not do their homework on the independent and lesser-known candidates. There were ballots, for example, where anti-climate change candidates were given transfers from the Greens. So yeah, you need to know who you're voting for. But let's pretend that the majority of independent politicians are the decent sort. In local government, that can be fine. But at a national level in Dáil Éireann, how can an assortment of independent TDs ever hope to form a stable government capable of seeing out a full term? The reason we have political parties is for political alignment and cooperation. If we just filled all Aaron with a bunch of potentially disparate independent TDs with no unifying banner to rally under, then Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil will laugh all the way back to government benches for another term on the gravy train. As for the assorted others, okay, so here's the deal. I've said before on a previous video that I don't like labelling myself past millennial, which is really just a descriptor as I can't change when I was born, and cynic, which when it comes to politics and my worldview is depressingly accurate. I don't like labelling myself because I don't want to be stuck in one particular box because when you are put in a specific box, your views can often be dismissed out of hand without ever being listened to in the first place. But here's the thing, if you followed my channel at all, you'd rightly guess that I lean left on most things, especially economic policy. I can be more moderate on certain social issues while being left on others. And knowing my views on landlords in particular, you'd rightly guess that I'm a socialist at heart. I believe in putting society first and ensuring that our capitalist economy works for society. So I may not be best placed to talk about right-wing politics, but I can at least be objective. So here goes. So right off the bat, there are too many out-and-out right-wing parties. For a country that has really only had centre-right parties up until the last set of elections, that being Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, there are just too many. And it's split the vote. Now, I've looked at the policies of all these new parties and I have to admit, I'm not sure what the differences are. Why should someone vote for Ireland first over the National Party, for example? What are the fundamental differences between the Irish Freedom Party and Independent Ireland? It splits the votes. This has been an all too common criticism of the left for as long as I've been an adult at the very least, that the left in Ireland is too splintered and is splitting the left vote. Sure, we've seen it in this set of European elections. Breed Smith decided to run against Claire Daly. Why? It split the left vote, which ultimately saw neither of them elected. The same is now true of the assorted right-wing parties. They are too splintered to really cause the sitting government parties any issues, which just leaves the door open for Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael to saunter back into government. They are also very new, and it takes time to become an established force. For example, the Social Democrats formed in 2015 and had two very experienced and established politicians in Roisin Shortall and Catherine Murphy for name recognition, and yet they are still very much in the growth stage of their party. They may well end up as a coalition partner in a future government with Sinn Féin, but they would very much be the junior party in that scenario. The electorate have to see a party working in their interests before they can truly grow into a force that can challenge the status quo, and that takes time. So for me, the right have splintered their votes, and the current coalition parties were the beneficiaries. Now, I'm not saying not to vote for them, even if I personally wouldn't, due to the fact that on most policies, I wouldn't align with them. For example, I'm very much pro-choice, and it's a red line issue for me. But realistically, they are not in a position to challenge the status quo, and they won't be by the time the general election rolls around, in my opinion. So you have to ask yourself, which is more important to you? Getting Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil out of government, or taking votes away from the only party or parties who can actually challenge the status quo, which invariably will lead to the current coalition waltzing back onto the gravy train. Well, maybe for some of their voters that's okay, since as I said, the closest parties we have to right 
right wing parties in Ireland are the status quo of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil. But if we are, as a nation, moving to the right, well, I have some reservations about that. Right wing policies are generally geared towards free market capitalism and generally would rather see less public funds spent on the likes of social welfare. And that can be seen on the policy pages of these new parties. While all of them talk about the housing crisis, for example, none of them say they will actually build more social housing and most want to give more incentives to the developers. One housing policy that really stood out to me was from the Irish Freedom Party. They want to relax standards in insulation, disability access and open space provision. I'm sorry, but that's a hard no from me. The progress in making homes more energy efficient is not something to be discarded. It should be the standard baseline. Open space provision is absolutely needed so children have space to play. And as for the disability access, is is this for real? Disability access is absolutely vital. Do people with disabilities not deserve a home? But this is right-wing politics in action. While these parties are firm on their immigration stance, which holds appeal to the many who are fed up with our current immigration policies, outside of that, they are very much right-wing. And right-wing are not exactly known for looking after the working class or addressing the wealth divide. None of these parties mention their social welfare policies, not even in relation to people with disabilities or their carers, except the aforementioned disregarding of disability access. And remember, it was notorious right-wing poster girl Margaret Thatcher who destroyed social housing in Britain. And before people assume that that means I fully endorse the left-wing parties on offer, no, it doesn't. I don't feel remotely represented by any party in Ireland at present. Both sides are myopic when it comes to housing for a start. The left can only see the market issues and refuse to see that the levels of immigration we have into the country are also putting a huge strain on the already low supply we have. And the right can only see immigration as the reason we don't have enough houses to go around while ignoring the vultures hoovering up properties and the developers making hay at our expense. These things are not mutually exclusive, yet it seems neither side can see this and I'm left stuck in the middle wondering if I've gone mad. I guess what I'm really saying is, please research who you are going to vote for when the general election rolls around. Go in with eyes wide open and choose, if not the best party because you can't see one, then choose the least worst option. And for me, still, that is Sinn Féin. Not because I want them to succeed, because quite frankly they have lost my trust, but because I want Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil gone. It's that simple. It's a numbers game, and no other party is in a good enough position to challenge the status quo. No doubt I'll be called a shinner for this stance, but honestly, I don't care. I just want rid of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil. And trust me, if Sinn Féin do manage getting into government, I'll be just as harsh on their failures as I am on the current lot. And if they do get in and make an arse of things, well, they'll be out on their ear fairly quick without a hope of ever getting back in, I'd imagine. I'm just going to call them Fianna Fáil to save time here, but here's how I see it. The hate speech bill was, until recently, supported by Sinn Féin, but it was Fianna Fáil who created it and pushed it. Sinn Féin have been woolly on immigration, but it's Fianna Fáil's policies that we are dealing with here and are the policies people are against. Sinn Féin rode in behind the government on the recent referendums, but again, it was Fianna Fáil who came up with them and pushed them. So let's say they're similar on these issues, and yes, that's fairly shite and depressing for those of us who want real change that represents the people. But here's where things are different. Sinn Féin have not wrecked housing for entire generations of young people. Sinn Féin have not created a black hole behemoth in our health service and have not signed off on the most expensive hospital ever. Sinn Féin have not abandoned children in agony waiting on life-changing spinal surgeries. Sinn Féin have not driven our economy off a cliff or imposed harsh austerity. But Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil have. So you have to ask yourself, do you want to ensure we continue the cycle with the known gravy train failures of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael? Or do we take a chance on Sinn Féin? Because even if they are the same in many ways, they might actually make a positive change to some of the biggest issues in housing and health. Honestly though, past Sinn Féin, I have no idea how I'm going to vote. Much like with my issues with right-wing politics, I feel that left-wing politics, when it comes to social issues in particular, have lost me. I'm not far left enough for some of their proposals 
principles and ideologies, so I genuinely don't know who else to vote for other than Sinn Féin and any good independents that I can find. I do know one thing though, everyone needs to get out when the general election is called and get voting. Get researching, get informed, get registered and get out and vote. Make your voice heard. I can only hope people see the results of the local elections and get motivated to enforce a real change at the ballot box next time round. But we shall see. I remain, as ever, a cynic. So what do you think? Are you happy with the candidates elected to your local council? Were you surprised at the results? Do you think the government will call a general election sooner than predicted? Or will they try to run the full term in the hopes of ensuring a win? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of new content. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or a super thanks, which is greatly appreciated. And a huge thank you to those of you that already have. You can also follow me on Twitter. Until next time, Slonga Fole.